Welcome to Flight Plans, the official podcast of the SAE Aero Design Series. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast, and I guess this is officially the new season starting off here with this. I'm Mike Sorg, the uh, video and podcast producer you see around the events here and hear the voice of uh, for the CDS series with SAE. And today, we're getting uh, ready for that new season, as I mentioned, and of course, uh, with every new season, there's a few changes, and right out of the gate, the fun stuff is going to be registration, and that's what we're talking about with you guys today, so you can get all the tips, make sure you're prepared and not caught off guard by these new changes that are uh, looking to help everybody out. Uh, We have with us, we've got a full compliment here today in the studio. First, Ryan Good, the University Programs Coordinator for Formula SAE is with us. How you doing, Ryan? How's it going, Mike? Good, good. Jamie Knopf is here, University Program Coordinator for Auto Draft Challenge. How you doing? I'm great, Mike. Thanks. And Amanda, your University Programs Developer. How you doing, Amanda? Thanks for having us. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot of changes going on with the registration for all of the uh, competitions for the 2020 season. Um, Ryan, talk to us about why these uh, changes were made by SAE. SAE actually implemented these changes, Mike, to help alleviate from um, potential server overload. And at the same time, this also will help with the stress of all these teams as they Mm -hmm. put 30 to 40 people at the computer trying to register for one competition. Now that's going to help pull away from that. As well, we want the opportunity for as many unique universities as possible to join these competitions. So we put in place some restrictions and that we're going to be speaking about today to help make sure that every university has the opportunity to uh, enter the competition. As well with one of the changes that were made is with Formula as compared to Baja and Arrow, Formula now are going to award their top 10 teams from the previous year's competitions to register for any competition which they place the top 10 in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for example, previously, if a team registered in the top 10 for Michigan and the top 10 for Lincoln, they had to choose which competition they wanted to pre-register for. Now, with our new system, they can register for both of those competitions during that pre-registration window. So those that's kind of the reason as to why we are doing these changes. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned at the beginning the, the stress in the server overload, which of course was very stressful, I'm sure, on the SAE side of things. Uh, you know, that was that we've done the live streams for those, you know, with the, the kids in there, and it is uh, the the best the, the the best worst thing for them that day, it feels. Oh, it, it really is. I mean, these competitions, some of them fill up within a minute, minute and a half. Uh, so they're all sitting there waiting for that 10 a.m. Eastern Standard mm. Time to occur. And as soon as that happens, all 30 clicks are happening at the same time rushing through that process. So this is really going to help out with that. And, and this is a situation that's been developing for years. I, I know since uh, uh, I've been working with you guys, um, you know, being there for those those sign-up days, the registration days, and watching that window get shorter and shorter every year, right? So, like, you know, this is really kind of a response to the demand the competitions have had. Yeah, when I started, uh, I started um, six years ago. Mm-hmm. We did all registrations on the same day, mm-hmm. and that was crazy. Uh, we shut down the server every year. It was really intense. It was a big deal around SAE and the IT department. And then a few years ago, we switched to having them uh, having each series register on different days. That seemed to help a little bit. We worked really hard with the IT team to simplify the registration processes much as possible so that it took teams a shorter amount of time to get in, get registered and get off. So another team could get in there. We've think we've captured all of the benefits that we have there. And, um, now this just happened to be the right time with the philosophical shift to allowing as many unique universities in as possible. So Mm -hmm. the, the technology piece is really just an added benefit of the philosophical piece. But ultimately, I think it makes a better day for everyone if, if no one is um, sending off the SAE, you know, DDoS alarm. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. This was so bad. that, And we've yeah. talked about this, this on, on previous registration podcasts that, that it, it, it all hits the servers and shuts down like all the computers in, in the entire office. Yeah. Because it looks like an attack because it's being quote air quotes attacked by all of you guys trying to register at front at once from all over the country in the world uh so so that's a very interesting issue that uh you guys have been working through here and then the other side effect of what we are implementing this year is going to be 
potentially the sellout times, mm -hmm. which we've really touted in the last few years as a really cool stat and metric for how quickly we can sell out. Mm -hmm. There's a chance we don't sell out some competitions that were being sold out for the last few years. So that's something else that is um, maybe – it doesn't feel as cool, except mm. now that means that every team that wants to compete in a competition has an opportunity to get on the registered team list before that second wave of registrations opens, which ultimately that's what we're looking for. So ideally, I want to see a lot more in different schools when we go to competition in 2020. Absolutely. Across the board. I like that. I like that. All right, let's get into the details of this. So what are the new dates for registration that uh, we're looking at? Pre-registration is going to open at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on October 7th. That will run through October 14th. Ryan's going to give a little more detail on each competition. Um, but after pre-registration closes on October 14th, we have a window one that will open October 14th through October 28th. So October 14th, that'll open at 10 a.m. and it'll close October 28th at 11.59 p.m. Window 2 will open October 28th at 10 a.m. and close November 27th at 11.59 p.m. And then finally, um, November 27th will be the final deadline for fees and all registration. Again, that closes at 11.59 PM. So what Jamie just gave you was the general registration period. SAE Aero Design actually follows the exact general information that Jamie just gave you. One thing I do want to note though is that as she mentioned, November 27th, all fees must be paid. All registration fees must be paid at this time and no teams will be able to register after this date. Excellent. And as we're going through this process here, uh, who, who do we contact uh, and have general chat with? We have any issues with this process going forward. So the general chat can go to collegiate competitions at SAE.org. Uh, the university program coordinators are answering any emails and what you guys are sending there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a few come through so far about the news posts and we've been able to uh, kind of clear those up. So specifically for aero design, Let's get into the details of this. Uh, tell us about first the pre-registration process for each event. So pre-registration for Aero um, will be October 7th mm -hmm. at 8 a.m. running through October 14th. For Aero Design, um, if a university has placed in the top three in their class at multiple events, one, a pre-registration pass in 2019 or an on-site raffle, they can pre-register for multiple events. So teams no longer have to choose just one to pre-register for if they've earned multiple pre-registration slots. So let's talk about window one. What all does that entail for Arrow? So with window one, what you're going to be looking at is going to be if you did not have the opportunity to pre-register or if you were a team that decided to forego your pre-registration slot and you did not pre-register whatsoever for any Arrow competition, at this point, you now have the opportunity to register for one aero competition um, for each class, that is. So when I'm saying that, if you are a university and you want to participate in micro, regular, and advanced, you can register for one of those classes for one competition. Mm -hmm. um, I know that does sound a little bit confusing. Just to give you an example. If a university does um, decide to register, uh, let's call it University of SAE. So if the University of SAE decides that they want to put a regular class in and a micro class in, I can register my regular class for SAE Aero Design West, and I can register my micro or regular class for SAE Aero Design West as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we can only put one class per competition during that okay. time frame. And, and can that be split if, if those classes, one maybe wants to go to West, one wants to go to East, like, you know, the micro from that school and the same school regular would first would like to go to the other competition? Yes, that is correct. So if one your SAE Aero Design regular team wants to go to West, but your mm -hmm. micro team wants to go to East, during that time frame, that can occur. So what happens with Window 2 with them? Window 2 is just a free-for-all at that point. <laughs> so if you're an advanced class team, so you let's say you were doing registration Window one, you mm -hmm. put your advanced class in to go, go to SAE Aero Design West. Mm -hmm. During window two, your advanced team can now also register if there are spots available, which 
at this time we're suspecting that there will be, uh, they can register for Aero Design East. Okay. So it's kind of one of those opportunities that once the those doors open, everybody's running for the gate. Excellent. So that fills in all the spots. So we just it just again that first opportunity for everybody to have a chance to get in uh, at least one competition this year. That is correct. So excellent. Is there any more support that's going to be going on uh, leading into these registration uh, processes, uh, Ryan? So what we actually have currently is we have all this information out on our news feeds currently, and we also have it on our Facebook pages as well. Um, if you do have any questions after hearing this podcast or after reading those news fe feeds, please feel free to reach out to us via email at collegiatecompetitions at sae.org. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions in which you currently have. Uh, on top of that, we are also working on a infographic that we're going to be able to share with teams at some point. And it's just going to be pictured of everything broken down, even in a simpler way. Uh, so we'll have pictures for the pre-registration process. We'll have pictures for the window one process and pictures for the window two process. Um, on top of that, we will also be hosting WebExes uh, the week of September 22nd. We'll have one for Arrow. We'll have one for Baja. And we'll also have one for Formula during that week period. Uh, if you check your um, CDS web pages, uh, you'll also be able to find it on there as well. That kind of lays out the date and time in which we will be hosting these. The most important part of this year is going to be prepared ahead of time with all the information you need. It will be a very smooth registration if you know what you're doing. But it could be painful if your team makes the wrong decision and then you realize the implications after the fact. So just make sure you get ahead of it. Like Ryan said, reach out and email us about your specific situation if you're confused. Particularly the pre-reg gets a little uh, confusing about what happens in window one and window two. So please reach out. We're here for you to answer any of those questions. Ryan and Jamie are going to be doing the WebExes, which is a really, really, really important. If you've never seen the registration screens, they're going to be running through the registration screens, the total process. Um, and I feel like we haven't actually said this enough during the podcast. So please don't re hit refresh, 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 refresh. You will <laughs> shut down the servers and then no one will be able to register. That is still an issue. It's we, always going to be. We are lightening the issue in the server <laughs> load, but it is still a possibility. There's still a lot of you that are going to be jumping in there in window one. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, SAE is just not Amazon on Prime Day, right? <laughs> they're, they're not. This built. is your Prime Day. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And so... There's no reason for a website like SAE to invest these massive server resources into literally 10 total minutes throughout mm -hmm. the week. So, um, uh, ser server load optimization is a very hard uh, 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 math problem to solve. It really is. And the advice that we always have given on the Facebook Lives is that don't refresh. The button's going to automatically flip over mm -hmm. to a register now button. When that happens, you can register. If you get stuck, then you can refresh. Wait for that button to flip. If it's after 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is also another really important note, make sure you have your time zones correct if you're not in um, Eastern uh, Time Zone. Once that button flips over and you don't see it, it should have flipped over, it hasn't flipped over, then you can refresh. Don't do it leading up to 10 a.m. Just is going to shut it down for everyone. Well, looking forward to see how this goes. Looking forward to see the uh, uh, hopefully a new variety of teams across all the competitions this year as we get out there in 2020. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Amanda, Ryan, and Jamie for joining me here and uh, uh, hashing through all the details and all the changes that we're having this year. And until next time, we'll see you guys out there. Please stay safe out there. Thanks for listening to Flight Plans, the SAE Aero Design Podcast. As always, we want to hear from you, so email aerodesign at sae.org. The show notes for this episode and all others can be found at aerodesign.fireside.fm. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next episode.